Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Lives Transforming Video Training Series. Our series is based on the book Freedom by author Derek Wilder. My name is Brent Henderson. Derek, back in 1979, I was living away from home. You know, I, I graduated high school. I was managing a store. I was feeling lonely, and a buddy uh, showed up at my house. Hadn't seen him in quite a while, and in his bag with him, he had a couple six packs of beer. He had a box of, of uh, I think it was Swisher Sweets, and he had some porn magazines. And not wanting to have him think like I wasn't cool or something, you know, I invited him on in. And for the next two or three days, I mean, debauchery was was the word. I mean, you know, smoking stoves and doing all the stuff we shouldn't have been doing. I you know I wasn't raised in a home, you know, that was like this at all. My parents showed up the morning after all this debauchery had happened, out of the blue, and they couldn't get into my apartment because it was locked. So they came to the store where I was, and when I found this out, I ran as quick as I could back to the house, got in there, all my debauchery, I grabbed all this junk, all this stash, threw oh, okay. it Okay, so you actually like uh, left the store and tried to beat them home or something? I mean, I had a, a 74 Firebird, and like... I don't know what car Starsky and Hutch had was a duster or something. They would go flying down the road. And I, just like they did, I came sliding into the, to the parking spot in front of my second story apartment. <laughs> I ran up the outside stairs to the house, grabbed all this stuff, threw it in this 30 gallon trash bag. As they're walking in the door, I'm tying up the last bag and I'm thinking, I got away with it. And my dad says, Hey, why don't you let me help you carry your trash downstairs? The, the trash cans were full. And so my dad said, well, let's just put your trash cans out. We'll just set the bags up on top of the trash cans. I'm thinking, well, this is good. Trash is going tomorrow. No one will ever know. Well, I wake up the next morning smelling my mom's coffee. She's brewing and French toast. And I come walking out. And I said, hey, where's dad? She said, well, he's, he's downstairs. I guess some dog got into your garbage last night and it's all <laughs> over the lawn. And I'm going, you oh. got it. I'm, I'm, I'm dying. And so, so you have pornography all over the front of your apartment. I mean, there's stuff out there on the grass that, you know, I'm hoping no kids are walking to school that day. Oh, my. So, and I'm feeling this unbelievable shame and stuff. And I go walking down the stairs and there it is. I mean, it's everywhere for the world to see all my stuff. And that was 1979. And it was kind of hard to get. I thought I was going underground with it yeah. because I thought I could tie it up and put it. No one could see it. We have computers now. You know, back then we didn't have NASA had them and that was about it. Yeah. But now guys can be feeling bad about themselves or mad at somebody else or whatever. And or lonely run, like you were. Or talking. lonely, exactly. And they run to this stuff. I remember you telling me recently about a couple you had been counseling and the husband um, had, a, had a porn issue. It was pretty amazing the way that you handled this situation. And I think it would be really great if you could kind of just go over that story with us. Yeah, Kelly was very upset. You know, one of the things that she'd mentioned to me right off the bat was that she was going to divorce her husband. And I asked her why. And she said she was going to divorce her husband because the Bible says if you lust, it's like committing adultery. Right. If you commit adultery, then you're released from the marriage. I asked her if she was upset and angry. She said she was livid. And so then, of course, I asked her what Jesus said about being angry very close to the verse of where Jesus talks about lust, he also talks about anger. And he compares anger to murder. And so I told her that it would probably be appropriate for her to divorce her husband if she was okay checking herself into a local jail for murder. <laughs> this shows how sensitive of a topic this is. Yeah. It shows how hurtful of a topic this is and can be and has become. And when I was talking to Kelly, I asked her, I said, I know you're very angry. But what I'd like to know, and I said, this is going to sound like a stupid question. Why is it that it bothers you so much that you found Mike's porn stash? Hmm. One of the reasons why that question is so important isn't because there's not a good reason. But instead, it's because the reason why women would be totally freaked out about this can vary so widely. With Kelly, her thought was, in this moment, she said, it makes me feel dirty. What do you mean by it makes me feel dirty. And she says, well, it makes me feel like I'm just not good enough, like I'm not living up or something. I'm not living up to what's in that magazine or I'm not living up to what he wants or something like that. She was feeling horrible about herself and it was really making her upset. Okay. Now, of course, Kelly's thought 
isn't going to be the same as every other woman's thought, but this was Kelly's thought. But there always is a thought that causes us to get terribly angry or feel horrible about herself. And this was Kelly's situation. And so the action that came out of that was she suggested that he needed to get fixed. Right. And that's a pretty typical response. I mean, anybody, when we see something going on, we want to fix them. That's right. You know, they, they decided to get the internet filter on the computer, get the phone filter, you know, on their smartphone. Right. Mike would get involved in accountability groups, uh, et cetera. There was a laundry list of all these things. Now, there's a couple challenges with these external fixes. Number one, the real issue going on with Mike is not an external issue. It's an internal thing that's going on. And so you can imagine what happened then a couple months later. He acted out again. Yeah. He then gets caught again. Yeah. Uh, And now that he's caught again, this is where Mike and Kelly kind of entered my world. The first thing I did was, is I spent some time with Kelly about her own thoughts. Is it really true when Mike looks at some woman in a magazine that somehow she isn't good enough? And I gave this example of, imagine, for instance, if my wife would go rob a bank, would that make me the criminal? No. And so in, in light of that, she started to realize she wasn't responsible for this issue. And she started to also realize that her getting her value based on what her husband thinks of her or comparing herself to other imaginary women in magazines or computer screens to to get her value and worth was really not helping at all. And so what we did is we moved away from the thought that says somehow him looking at that makes her dirty. And we moved into what is true, which is, my va- her value doesn't come from what's outside of herself. Her value comes from God in her. So now she can be okay with herself and her emotion moves away from her feeling horrible about herself to being okay with herself. She stopped crying as we started talking, as she started releasing herself from having to live up to some imaginary standard because she was already good enough. God had created her unique. And of course, the action that comes out of that way of thinking is healthy confrontation. Now the communication door begins to open back up because it's been closed. It's not only been closed because of her anger, but it's also been closed because Mike, of course, his shame has gone into hiding. Yeah. And he's not going to say anything to anybody about it. Yeah, he's going underground. This gets even a little more challenging. Unfortunately, what I hear a lot of times is Mike actually starts blaming Kelly for his for porn. his addiction, yeah. Yeah. You're not meeting my physical needs. That's why I'm looking at porn. It's all your fault. I've heard a number of men say things like this. This line of thinking goes back a long time. Adam tried to do the same thing with Eve. You know, Eve eats off the, the tree, and then Adam does. Adam looks at God and says, she made me do it. Mm-hmm. You know what? God didn't buy into it then, and God's not going to buy into it now. <laughs> Mike gets to choose what he does. There's no blaming that can be extended to make her the reason why. And we can go back to the bank analogy right now. Do you think a court would be comfortable with me getting up on the stand and saying, I know I robbed the bank, but my wife made me do it. Right, right. So this is a ludicrous thought that somehow Kelly is the reason why Mike is looking at porn. But we're still back to Mike. And the more I talk to men about porn, the more I'm fascinated by what's going on in our minds. We've talked a number of times about our thoughts create our emotions and our emotions create our actions. Well, looking at porn is what? Is it a thought, emotion, or an action? Well, it's the action. That's the action part. The problem isn't looking at porn because that's the action. Yeah, it's like the fruit, the unhealthy fruit on the tree. That's right. Six, yeah. But the question is, what's the root behind that? Right. So what's underneath the action? What's underneath the action is the... Emotion. Emotion. Many times, for one reason or the other, they absolutely feel horrible about themselves. And then, of course, those emotions are coming from what? They're coming from what they're thinking. They're coming from what they're thinking. So, for instance, in Mike's case, there was two things that were going on. Number one, he was totally overwhelmed by his work. So imagine where you go home at night and you just want to escape. That's when sin looks good. And the pornography was causing him to escape. However, him working so much, what do you think that did in the relationship between him and his wife, Kelly? Absolutely broke down. That's right. And so now we have a family that's broken down. We have a marriage that started to break down. And Mike's thinking about nothing but work. She's now not as interested in being physically connected with him. Because she's feeling kind of rejected. And so now he's not only thinking, I I feel totally overwhelmed by my work and I'd love to escape. 
But he's also thinking something like, I'm a horrible spouse, otherwise my wife would have sex with me. Yeah. All those thoughts are moving him into feeling horrible about himself and thinking things like, if I could just have somebody that would like me. So he goes to this imaginary world that this woman wants him on this computer screen. Sure. And so he's escaping from the work, going into fantasy land over here. In his own mind, this woman on the page can't reject him, can't say no. And so in his mind, he feels like he gets relief no different than alcohol or no different than a Krispy Kreme. Of course, different consequences, but the same principle applies. However, imagine what happens when Mike decides that his value doesn't come from his work. His worth doesn't come from whether Kelly has sex with him or not. Right. And how does he feel now? He feels a lot less horrible. And if he doesn't feel horrible anymore, does he have anything to escape from? We've taken out the inner turmoil that's actually causing the temptation to look at the porn. Yeah. See, this is a real transformational solution. A fake solution is internet filters. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with internet filters. I'm just saying if you use an internet filter and you don't solve the core problem that's going on inside of Mike, ultimately the internet filter will break down. Yeah. And when we do get to the real issue, Mike all of a sudden realizes whether his work goes well or not, his value as a person doesn't change. God being in him is what completes him, not his job. Christ being in him is what creates value in him, not whether a wife physically does what he wants her to do in a particular day or week. This whole message of Christ being in us is so huge. It's the gospel. You know, Brent, it seems like we spend most of our life trying to find meaning and value. However, Paul spent most of his ministerial life sharing this gospel message that says, you can stop trying to find other things outside of you to somehow make you feel like you live up. And when that is the case, you don't need these other things to complete you anymore. And when we try to have something else outside of ourselves other than God complete us, it absolutely wrecks our world. In this next Lives Transforming video series, we're going to be looking at something called the paradox of guilt. 